Hey everyone, Tio here. Today I'm reviewing the Mont Blanc Master Stroke Number no. 149 Calligraphy Curve Nib Special Edition. Since I use fountain pens for drawing, this review will be from the perspective of an artist. Let me give you the bottom line up front. This is a big 18K gold nib that is quite versatile for drawing. This is a very beautiful pen which should appeal more to collectors due to its relatively high pricing. The official retail price is US $1050 and here in Singapore it's $1460 Singapore dollars. So this is a very expensive fountain pen and I did not purchase this pen. This pen actually belongs to my friend Annabella who is a fellow artist. It doesn't make sense for me to buy such an expensive pen to make a review on YouTube. The only downside to this pen is the company actually used a sticker here for this design. I think this is a sticker because when I run my finger on it, I cannot feel any texture. So this is not carved. And when I look very closely, I can see paint flicking off the surface. So this is quite shocking to find on a pen this expensive. Her sticker is not going to last as long as metal with usage and wear and tear. So it's a bad design choice to use a sticker here. Let's take a look at the items included in the box. So this is the packaging box, which is quite nice. And this is the actual box that has the pen. And on the cover, you can see the iconic Mont Blanc emblem. This is a star with six rounded points and you can see the texture on the box which looks like leather but this is probably not leather. The sides and the back are textured as well. So let's open the box to see what's inside which is of course the pen in its pen holder. All the surfaces inside are surfaced with felt and you can pull this up see what's beneath so we have the service guide and this is a manual to show you how you can use the pen nib i'll show you the lines that this pen nib can create later on this box is well made so you can definitely reuse this to store other items or store the pen the mont blanc master stroke 149 is a beautiful fountain pen so this pen design is very classic, but it's not very special or unique because you can find fountain pens with this black and gold design with other fountain pens as well, such as the ones that I have here. This pen at the top is the Platinum 3776. The gold that you see is probably not gold and it's also not gold plated. The price of this pen is, if I remember correctly, maybe just 10 to 20% of the Mont Blanc. And this is a Pilot Custom 743 with a Falcon nib. You see the same gold against black racing design here. And this is the Sailor 1911 fountain pen. Again, we have gold color against glossy black body. The reason why this Mont Blanc is so expensive and much more expensive compared to other fountain pens that I have just showed you is because of the branding. If this pen actually comes with a fine, medium or broad nib, I will not even consider buying this because it's just too expensive. So the main selling point of this fountain pen really comes down to the curved nib. Here's a close-up on the pen nib which is made with 18k gold. The numbers 4810 at the top represents the height of Mont Blanc mountain. And here you can see the parallel line designs as well. And within the lines, you can actually see carvings as well. This is the closest I can zoom in. So the tags are Mont Blanc. On the second line, we have 18k followed by some logo or design followed by AU750. This nib is very beautiful and the design is very classy. And it's very shiny. That's the feet. 
I'm not sure what the feed is made of but the inflow is really good let's take a closer look at the curved nib so you can see the tip is actually quite big and the gold color doesn't extend all the way to the tip so the tip is actually silver in color and if I turn it this way, you can see the slit. So that's the broad end. This is the broad end, probably cut at 45 degrees. You can write with the pen nib upside down as well. So that's the point you will use to draw or write with thin lines. Let's take a closer look at the pen. When you cap the pen, sometimes the design here will not align with the pen clip. So sometimes it will appear here or it will appear here. This pen is made with black resin that is polished to a high gloss. The company calls this precious resin and the metallic parts are gold plated. And at the top, you can see the Mont Blanc emblem again. This white star represents the snow-covered mountaintop of Mont Blanc. Let's look at the pen clip. I actually did not notice the text on the side of the pen clip here. This is actually the serial number for this pen. And this is a close-up on the gold-plated pen clip. So this pen is very glossy and very shiny. Let's look at the ring here at the bottom. There are three rings here and on the middle ring you can see the words Mont Blanc and within the letters you can see carvings. So the attention to detail is uh, it's right up there. So the words are Mont Blanc, Master Stroke, number one, 49. Moving down, we have this design. Let me just align the design with the pen clip so that the pen looks nicer. These are three parallel calligraphy lines. So this is the same design you saw on the box and also on the pen nib. Each line has a different width. And from what I can see, this seems like a piece of sticker because if I run my finger on top I cannot feel the lines there is no texture with the lines so this is not carved and when I look very closely I can actually see some paint flicking off the surface so this is definitely not acceptable for a pen this expensive now at the back here you can see the end cap are moving this is the refueling mechanism the refueling mechanism is at the back. This pen uses piston-based refueling mechanism, even though you can't really see it. You can twist the end cap like this and it will push the piston down. This part of the pen, which is just beside the screw threads, is actually translucent, so you can actually see through to the ink inside. So this will give you an idea how much ink is left in the pen. This pen is big. And this pen is bigger than the other fountain pens that I have. And these fountain pens, they use removable ink converters, which have much smaller ink capacity. From what I can see with this Mont Blanc, the whole body here is actually the ink reservoir. So this can hold a lot of ink. To refill the ink in this pen, you have to dip the pen nib into the ink bottle and pull the ink up into the pen. And now you have to clean the grip area as well as the pen nib. This pen nib is big. This is 2.75 centimeters or 1.08 inches. So this is quite long. And it would be easier to refill this pen with a shorter ink bottle than a taller one. If you put this pen in this ink bottle, you can get ink 
here as well because the bottle opening is there. This is Sailor Kiwaguro, which is waterproof black ink. There is a little cup inside which allows you to turn the bottle upside down and when you turn it back up, the ink will go into that cup so you don't have to push the pan all the way to the bottom of the ink bottle. If you want to use waterproof inks inside the pan, make sure the ink bottle specifically mentions the ink is safe for use inside fountain pans. And for all those ink bottles you have at home, look at the bottle opening to check whether there are any physical crusty ink particles and if there are ink particles beside the bottle opening, those inks are not safe for use in fountain pens. Let's look at the lines this pen can create, starting with the thinner line. I'm holding the pen more vertically to get the thinner line. And if I tilt down at an angle, maybe at 45 degrees, I can get the broad strokes. The line variation you can get with this pen will depend on the angle of the pen. But you don't have to pay special attention to how you hold the pen because when you're writing or drawing, the angle of the pen will change and you will be able to get those line variations automatically. It's just that when you want thin lines, you can tilt the pen more vertically to get those thinner lines. And if you want to, you can turn the nib upside down to get the even thinner lines. The ink flow is very good even when you're using the nib upside down. This pen is quite versatile for drawing because you can create very thin lines as well as very broad strokes. And you can use this nib to fill in areas very quickly as well. And the ink flow is really good. Just note that if you use a lot of ink, the ink will also take a much longer time to dry. You can create dots easily by holding the pen more vertically. And you can create even smaller dots by again turning the nib upside down. This review will not be complete without a comparison to a Fude nib fountain pen. This is a Sailor fountain pen for beginners and this has a Fudi nib, which is a bent nib. This pen is less than 10 or $20. A Fudi nib can produce thin lines, extra thin lines, as well as broad strokes, just like the Mont Blanc calligraphy curve nib. So let me just draw some really simple boxes. Just to show you the line variation you can get with this pen nib. Now I'm not using the pen in any special way. I'm not paying special attention to how I'm holding the pen. I'm just drawing rectangular boxes. If I want very thin lines, yes, I can hold the pen more vertically or turn it upside down to get those really thin lines. But this is me drawing uh, with my usual drawing speed, with my usual drawing style. And next, let's switch over to using the Mont Blanc. So, same thing, I'll be drawing rectangular boxes, not paying special attention to how I hold the pen. And one thing I notice is the lines that I get with the Mont Blanc, I mean, the ink flow is definitely much better. That's for sure, but the line variation is not as obvious compared to the Fudi Nib fountain pen. So the boxes drawn with the Fudi Nib fountain pen have more obvious line variation. If you look at this box at the back, you can see the thin lines versus the thicker lines, and here as well, the thin versus the thicker lines. But for the Mont Blanc, you can see the line variation isn't as obvious. But the ink flow definitely is much better with the Mont Blanc. There are artists like me who actually prefer the unpredictability of the line variations you can get with a Fudi Nib fountain pen. I'm not into calligraphy or calligraphy art, so I can't tell you how good this pen nib is when it comes to calligraphy work. Anyway, let me just uh, write some 
text, some widths for you to see. I'm going to turn the pen nib upside down again to write with the very thin lines first. Next, I'm going to write with broader lines or thicker lines by using the pen nib normally. So you can see the lines are noticeably thicker. Compared to a standard nib, the line width for this is probably considered a medium. And lastly, let's write with the extra broad strokes. So this is really thick. This uses a lot of ink. So these are the three line weaves you can get with the Mont Blanc Calligraphy Curve Nib. The extra thin, the M, the medium, and this is definitely extra broad. If you have intention to buy this pen for writing purposes, I would say this pen is more suitable for those who write big because the default line width that you get with this pen is at least a medium because the lines are quite thick. So the drawing time for this will take a while. Things like this can happen quite easily if you don't wait for the ink to dry completely. Let me write some Chinese text that I have not written for a very long time. I think this looks fine, except I can't really get the taper for the strokes. You can see the taper here. Um, here the taper is not there. This ended quite uh, abruptly. I don't see the sharp point. Here I can see the sharp point, here as well, and maybe here. But here and here, um, the end is quite abrupt. And now I'm going to hold the pen more vertically to see if I can get the tapered ends. Mm, not really. Let's write some Japanese characters. I don't actually know Japanese. But the words that you see here means this pen is quite expensive. So I've just showed you the drawing and handwriting test with the Mont Blanc. Now I want to talk more about the drawing experience of the Mont Blanc versus a Fude Nib fountain pen which can actually produce the same type of lines. So this is a sketch that I have drawn with the Fude Nib and I'm going to redraw the same scene using the Mont Blanc and compare the two sketches. The Fude Nib fountain pen that I used for that earlier sketch was from the Sailor, my first fountain pen, which is just 20 US dollars or less. Now the main thing with this Mont Blanc is to get the lines that you want, you have to make a conscious effort to hold the pen in a specific way, a specific angle. So most of the lines are actually uniform, they have uniform thickness. So if you want the lines to be thicker, you have to hold the pen lower to get the broader strokes. When drawing normally, uh, when I'm not paying attention to how I hold a pen, the lines will appear to be uniform. So that's the main difference between a Fude Nib fountain pen versus uh, this Mont Blanc. A Fude Nib fountain pen will give you expressive lines and you don't have to uh, think too much about how you hold a pen.
the ink flow for this pen is really good. The lines are darker compared to the Fudi Nip fountain pen. But of course, how good the ink flow is from your fountain pen really depends on the, the feed, how they make the feed. And this pen needs to have very good ink flow because this pen uses a lot of ink. And this pen also needs to have a huge ink capacity because this pen uses a lot of ink. The pen nib is very smooth on the paper and the overall drawing experience is really good. It definitely is quite satisfying to be drawing with such an expensive pen. And now let's hold the pen more vertically to draw the thinner lines. Let me reverse the nib here to draw the extra thin lines. The ink flow is quite good, even when the pen nib is reversed like this. And I can use the broad nib to color this area, to fill this area very quickly with black. I may have drawn this uh, wrong. Anyway, you can use the broad strokes to fill areas very quickly and you can use the broad strokes to draw rectangles very quickly. It's actually not that convenient to turn the nib upside down repeatedly. So to draw thin lines, I usually just hold the pen more vertically. And to draw the thicker lines, just hold the pen lower. So let's color the, let's fill in the windows here. This area here should be black. Maybe this area is black as well. Let me draw a window here and maybe have some people on the street. And now let's take a look at the differences between the two sketches. The sketch on the left was drawn with the Fudi nib. At a glance, I can see the ink flow for the Fudi nib fountain pen isn't as good compared to the Mont Blanc. Even when I filled this area with the broad strokes, you can see the black is not as black compared to the Mont Blanc. You can also see some gradation with the strokes from the Fudi nib. So here it's mid gray to black. And with the Mont Blanc, it's just black. The ink flow can be affected by a combination of the nib and the feet. So it is possible to find a Fudi nib fountain pen that has better ink flow than what you see here. Now the lines with this sketch are definitely more expressive. I did not pay any special attention when I drew this sketch except for the parallel lines where I held the pen more vertically and for the black areas where I held the pen low to get the broad strokes. But for all these angular lines, uh, these were drawn as I normally would. So here you can see the thinner line and now we have thicker lines, thin lines, we have thick that becomes thin and we have very thin lines here thicker lines so it's this combination of thin and thick lines that make the lines look more expressive and here you can see the thicker lines contrast with the thinner lines and occasionally there are some ink blobs and these are the lines from the Mont Blanc calligraphy curve nib. You can see the lines are more consistent. The line width doesn't vary as much. I did hold the pen more vertically to draw the parallel lines and the pen at low angle to draw the broad strokes. But for the angular lines that you see here, um, all these lines, they are quite uniform in terms of the width. So the lines here are not as expressive compared to the Fudi Nib fountain pen. Once you know the type of lines you can get with each pen, you will be able to tell at a glance 
which sketch was drawn with which pen. All right, to conclude, this is a beautiful pen that is very well made. The nib is big and shiny and gorgeous. The ink flow is fantastic. Now for drawing, you will have to make a conscious effort to hold the pen in a certain way, in a certain angle to get the lines that you want. If you don't pay attention to how you hold the pen, the line width is going to be medium and this pen will perform no different compared to a fountain pen with medium nib. So the selling point for this nib is the extra thin lines and the extra broad lines you can get in addition to the medium lines. There is no mention on Montblanc's website as to whether this is a limited edition nib. The previous calligraphy flexible nib was discontinued, so chances are this nib is likely to be a limited edition as well. The only downside of this pen for me would be the use of this sticker, which is not permanent. I don't know what the company was thinking when they decided to use a sticker instead of a metal piece with carving. Anyway, if you are thinking of buying this pen for drawing purposes, the deciding factor will probably come down to whether you need the lines to be predictable or unpredictable. And if you are looking for interesting fountain pens to draw with, do check out fountain pens with the foodie nib, the bent nib, and also the sailor specialty nibs. I have review for some of those pens on my website and also on my YouTube channel. The links are in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions uh, regarding this pen or if you have this pen, share with me your thoughts on this in the comment section below.